Hi! In this video we'll focus on more complex material rendering. Specifically we'll focus on clear coat, layers of materials that change reflections on the surface. We'll start by discussing what Adobe standard material is and highlight key parameters of the coat behavior. Then we'll delve into building a simple car paint material in Substance 3D Stager and apply a coat layer on top of it. Finally, we'll build a more advanced car paint material with flakes and scratches in Substance 3D Designer and take that back to Stager. Adobe Standard Material, ASM in short, is a material model used in Adobe's 3D apps for physically based rendering. It ensures that materials created in any Adobe application, such as Substance 3D Designer, Painter, Sampler or Stager, look the same. It also helps you achieve similar visuals in other apps using PBR rendering. In this video we'll focus on the code parameters, which are essential for car paint materials. Code can be used for paint, varnishes, lockers, powder coating and more to provide protection and decoration. Code is a clear coat layer on top of the base material. It's a second speckle or reflection on top of the first so that you can have two roughnesses at the same time. We will create a car paint material with it. In real life, car paint consists of several layers of paint, mainly a base rougher paint and then a clear shiny coat on top of it. Several parameters control the color, roughness, specularity, coat opacity and the normals. Let's check out some of these settings. Coat opacity is used to control the visibility of the coat layer. It defaults to zero. The more towards one, the more visible the coat layer becomes. Coat roughness is used to control how smooth or matte the coat surface is. It controls the coat roughness independent of the base surface roughness. Coat normal changes the normals of the coat, affecting only those reflections. You can use it to add surface details like subtle texture, scratches, water drops, cracks and more to the coat layer. Let's make a simple basic material with a coat layer in Substance 3D Stature. We simply add a basic material onto the model, change the roughness to a bit rougher surface and choose a golden color. To add a second coat layer on top of it, we scroll down to the coat menu in the material tab. Then we add it by increasing the coat opacity slider. Let's tweak the roughness to a really low value for sharper reflections. Increasing the coat specular level helps to push the light reflections at glancing angles. How much we see the bottom color through the coat layer depends on the coat opacity. These simple steps give you a basic uniform car paint. In Stature we are limited to some predefined parameters. If I want to push this further by adding metallic flakes or a scratch coating, I will need to use some more advanced methods. Let's check out how to do that. If we want to make more complex effects, we have to go to Substance 3D Designer. We start with the ASM preset and get rid of the SSS, Sheen and Anisotropy outputs. Further we delete the Opacity, Specular and IOR outputs. We don't use those. To get the base of our flakes, we can use Cell's 4 node and scale it a lot smaller. A white noise fast node would also work. Or you could make your own more detailed pattern with specific flake shapes. Let's use a histogram shift node to offset it. Now we use a RGBA merge node and connect both to the R and G channel. This results in nice orientated flakes. Further connect the white grayscale uniform color node to the B and A channel. We now have a really nice flakes variation. Let's choose a reddish color for the base car paint. For the roughness we choose a slightly darker value. I keep checking the 3D view to judge how the final render will look. Now we convert the RGBA merge node to a grayscale, use an auto levels for full range and blend it with a uniform color node in grayscale mode to tweak the sparkling amount before joining it to the metal output. To control how strong the flakes normals are, we blend it with the default normal node. Then we add a grunge map 12 and connect it to the coat normal node to add some scratch details to the coat layer later on. For scratch details in the coat roughness channel, we invert it, blend it with a black grayscale uniform color node, 
and forward it to the roughness output. Now we can expose the key parameters that we want to control in other software. Let's expose the default color, grayscale values, the blending opacity for the normal, and flake details for the metalness. I always make sure to name my exposed parameters properly. This makes it much easier to work with later on. Finally, we expose the coat opacity, coat color, coat roughness, and scratch strength that we use in the coat normals. If we wouldn't expose the controls for the coat aspects here, they would be locked and unavailable inside of Stature. So whenever you want to control something inside Stature, either expose the parameters or delete the inputs and outputs for that aspect. To connect the scratch strength also with the code normals, we use an empty function. Add the scratch strength float input and divide it by 10. This makes the scratch normal strength 10 times weaker than the code roughness. It would be too strong otherwise. Let's set the division node as output node. Let's send it over to Substance 3D Stature by using Send to. Back in Stature, our material appears right away in the Material tab. We simply drag and drop it onto our object to apply the material. Using Send to and ASM materials make it very easy to jump between applications. First, we tile the material a bit. Then we tweak the resolution to 2K or higher. We have all our exposed parameters available in Stature. Let's choose a nice reddish color and adjust the roughness for a base paint. By adjusting the strengths of the flakes and playing with the metallic slider, we can control the appearance of the flakes and the overall metallic. Now we focus on the code settings. Let's increase the opacity of the coat. For this coat layer, we'll take a really low value for the roughness. We can add some scratch details on top of it. The different roughness values give us not only the sharp reflections from the top layer, but also the smoother one from the bottom layer. For a great car paint photo and render, everything has to work together. Car photographers often use huge softboxes, multiple light sources and clean studio scenes. These softboxes are used to diffuse and soften the light and spread it as much as possible. To get a nice render of car paint materials, accurate material setup, a good model and good lighting is essential. Especially the lighting helps to make the paint look believable, reflective and vibrant. You can either build a nice studio setup with physical lights, use a studio or outdoor environment light or a combination of those. Experiment with different lighting setups to find the one that works best for your scene. In this case, I used a big long image light above, mixed with a subtle environment studio light. A black background mixed with a subtle blurred environment background really helps for an interesting lighting. I hope we've clarified how to use code for your car paint materials and how to make your own advanced car paint materials. Good luck using it in your own projects.